everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Kasaya. This is Saya Swag and I have a fun new tutorial for you today from Shambhala Bags. It is her newest pattern, the Pachira. It is adorable. It comes either for sale by itself or you can buy it in a pack with the macadamia. Um, it's like a mama and a baby. They're both adorable, but this first one spoke to me when I saw it. So this is the adorable crossbody Pachira that we are making today. It's just, I love the design of it. I love the piecing on the front and the back, the way she did the color blocking. I did mine a little crazy and um, wild, kind of reminds me of 80s slash 90s wild and I love it so much. I have doggies in here today. You see my little, see my little ochre dokes? Oakley, hey. Hi, baby. Hi. They came to see what mama was doing. I just had to show them on camera. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Anyways, <laughs> my babies. Um, okay, so let's get back to this bag. Adorable, adorable. I use so many fun materials for this bag. It is very busy, but I feel like it just works. All right, let's talk about it. So we have on the front, we have this cute thumb lock here, if I can do it backwards. Cute little thumb lock that closes the main and this slip pocket on the front. So this is just a slip pocket there, all right? And then the back, you have another slip pocket. So it's got front and back slip pockets. I love this thumb lock um, for the closure, it's adorable. I did piping around it. You don't have to do piping. I did the fake piping. It's just vinyl folded in half and sewed into the seam. I do love how it gives it just a little pop, especially if you do an accent color. I kind of love that. Um, it is a gusset on it. So if you're not familiar with sewing gussets, this might be a good bag to practice on. Um, it's small. It's a little thing. It's skinny, right? It's not very big, which I like. Perfect to carry all your essentials. And then inside, I just have a cute little slip pocket, not a slip pocket, ugh, cute little zipper pocket. Okay, <laughs> on the inside. And that's it. Um, I just think it's just adorable. Uh, the materials I use. I use this cotton canvas from Tay Tay's Custom Fabrics. It says it's on pre-order right now and she's getting it very soon, so either sign up for it or keep your eye out for it. She is bringing it back into her shop. All of the vinyls used on this bag are from Indo Love Creation. Um, this pink and the green are the part of the Rad Pack that we did a collaboration on, and they are just gorgeous. And the black is just her black, I forget the line of what it's called, but it's just a black vinyl. They all sewed up beautifully. The inside, I have a yellow waterproof canvas, I believe from Wonderground Fabrics. And I interfaced all of my outside pieces with Decaville Light, all of my cotton canvas pieces with a woven. And I mean, that is the gorgeousness of this bag. <laughs> this will be for sale on my website if you're interested. I will list it up there. Um, all the hardware is from my website. I do have these cute little D connectors. They're pronged, they're attached with prongs. They're perfect for a smaller bag like this. I carry the thumb locks as well. So go check that out. And I wanted to give a shout out to one of my three months Redhead members, Roxanne Richo. I hope I'm saying your last name right. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. It means so much. Um, we do lots of fun things over on my Patreon, so go check that out. I will link it below as well. And I think that is it for this video's intro. <laughs> I think the dogs are ready for me to be done for the day. And I hope you enjoy what I have for you. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments. Please like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does make an impact. So I would really appreciate it. And let's start making this adorable little bag. Okay, let's go over our pieces for this cute bag. I have interfaced all of my cotton canvas pieces with a woven interfacing. And then all of my exteriors will have Decaville Light out of the seam allowances. She does have those pieces in the pattern, which is 
so helpful um, to have those stabilizer stabilizer pieces in the pattern. Um, I will be uh, putting on my main front and back panel ones after we piece it because there's you know quite a few little cute pieces that we need to do. So I will do that in the process of making the bag. All right, so let's go over our pieces for this bag. So I have my exterior gusset all cut out. You should have two of those. And I do have them interfaced with Decaville Light. I have my back pocket exterior, one. My back panel bottom, one of those. It's a lining piece, okay? My back pocket lining and front pocket lining. So you need to cut two of these out. And again, I interface them all with woven. My front panel bottom lining, okay? And then my front pocket section B, there's one of those. My front panel top left, one of those. My front panel top right, one. My lower band, front and back, you should have two of those. Front pocket contrast band, one. Front pocket section A, one of those. There's lots of little pieces, but it's gonna go together super easy. I, I've looked over the pattern. It's gonna be good. Okay, um, my, let's see, back panel top, you should have just one of those. And then my flap panel, which is the thumb lock. She does it double-sided, so you should have an exterior and a lining for that, so I'm doing that cute leopard print for the back and this for the front. And then for our inside pieces, I have my lining contrast band, and she does have Decaville light for those two pieces. I think it'll just give that bag really nice structure, so I did do that. And then you should have two main panel pieces. I'm using this canvas for that along with my lining gusset pieces, two of those. And then I am putting a zipper pocket inside the lining. So I have one zipper pocket piece. What else do we need? Um, you can do piping on this bag. If you are not really familiar with it and it scares you, you can leave it out. Um, I do faux piping, so it's kind of fake piping. All I do is take a strip of um, vinyl I fold it in half like this. I'll base that together and I'll use that for my piping. So it just gives it a pop of color. I cut it at seven eighths of an inch wide, not quite an inch um, just because of the seam allowance. So just pay attention to whatever the seam allowance is for how wide you want your piping. And then I have my ha handle. For the hardware pieces for this bag, I have them all on my website, actually. I was pretty happy about that. I have my thumb lock here. Okay, I'm doing nickel. And I am using for the connectors uh, for the strap on this bag, since, it's, since it is a smaller bag, I'm using these cute little baby D-prong connectors. Okay, we're gonna put the clips through that on the side. I'm excited to use those. They're gonna be really cute. Um, and then I have my strap hardware, two swivel clips, and an adjuster. My, do I need these? I don't need these. I have D-rings, but we're using the connectors. I don't need this. Um, I have zipper pull. We just need one, but I just grabbed a bag. And then my nameplate. And I think that's it. I do have some zipper tape for my inside pocket. And we're ready to rock and roll. Let's start sewing this bag up. So to start, I'm just going to make my crossbody strap and get that out of the way. So I have it three inches wide. I'm doing a three fourths inch total crossbody strap. And I have my center marked, my double sided tape along each side. I will fold my raw edges in and then I will fold it one more time after that. And then I will sew it down each side. So here we go.
Since this is a smaller bag, I feel like rivets will be just fine with this. So I'm going to rivet my hardware on here. Let me melt my threads down here. All right. So I'm going to go up and over this slide first. And then I will put a rivet in that. Make a hole. Okay, and then I have my rivets here. These are just the nine millimeter rivets that I saw on my website. They seem to be pretty universal for most projects. All right, got that on there. All right, and then I'm gonna slide on one hook here. All right, and then you wanna go up, and I need to melt these threads. All right, up and back through this adjuster here. Okay, so that's what that ends up looking like. I've got my hook on that end. I'm showing this because I don't always show the strap steps, so it's always good to get a refresher here. And I'm gonna put two rivets on this one just because I like the look of it, basically. <laughs> There's really no other reason than that. And it's a little bit more, you know, secure with two rivets. All right, so I'm gonna do one right here. I'm just eyeballing it. And then I'll do the other one where they're down towards the edge here. About right there. Okay. Put those rivets in. And there's two. All right, so my strap is all done. Got all the pieces on that. I can set that aside and let's start piecing this bag together. Let's start. Okay, I want the front panel top left and front panel top right to start. Make sure you're doing these correctly. You want the, the dip to be on the inside pieces. Okay, so you're gonna put those wrong sides out, right sides together. And we're gonna sew those together with our seam allowance. And then we will flatten that out and top stitch. Here we go. She has you flattening that seam out completely in the back like this. And then you are top stitching along each side of that piece, okay? Each side of that seam. Awesome. So I've got those two pieces together and then you want the front panel bottom. We're gonna take those two pieces, right sides together, line those up, and we are going to sew those together at our full seam allowance. And 
And then you wanna turn that up. And we are gonna press that seam allowance down towards the bottom panel, okay? Down towards this bottom panel here. And then you are going to top stitch through this bottom panel. You always wanna to top stitch where your seam allowance is turned down through because then it's giving it a little bit extra to tack that down. If I were to do it along this top edge and it wouldn't be through the seam allowance, that would just flip back up and there would be no point. So always double check your top stitching, top stitch line there. It kind of just helps tack everything down in place. Awesome. All right, I am going to go and put my, so this is my front panel piece, right? I'm gonna go ahead and go put my Decaville light onto this piece, and then we'll start assembling the pocket that goes on it. Okay, my Decaville light is on there. I'm gonna set this aside for a minute. We are gonna work on that front pocket. So you wanna get this front pocket section B, and your front pocket section a, and we are going to assemble these together. Now, your piece has a slight slant on it, so make sure you're attaching it to the right side, which I think, yep, okay. <laughs> make sure you're attaching it to the correct side. It should be the straight side of that piece. All right, right sides together, so it's your full seam allowance here. And then we are going to open that seam and stitch down both sides, just like we did on that front panel piece. All right, I'm gonna go down both sides. My seam allowance is laying flat behind it. Okay, I'm gonna take my lower band, one of them here, along, make sure you're along the, the bottom of these two pieces, okay? And we are going to put those right sides together and sew it our full seam allowance with that. to press that seam allowance down towards this bottom piece and we're gonna top stitch through that. So here is the part where you put on your thumb lock and then she has you put your little logo on here too if you want. What I'm going to do first, I think I want to take this and I'm just going to fuse a piece of Decavel light right here to this pocket because we will have the thumb lock and our nameplate on here and I just want to give that a little bit extra um, stability because this is just cotton canvas with the woven behind it. So I'm going to go put some Decaville on it and then we will attach those two things. Okay, I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do this. So this is the template she has for the thumb lock. So what I'm going to do 
Yeah, so here's my thumb lock and I want that up here like this. So I'm just going to center, pretty much eyeball this, right? And get it centered into this picture and that will pretty much be the center part of my thumb lock. I think that's pretty good right there. And then I'm gonna make the markings on here on this paper so I can see where to go. Okay, I've got my slits right there. So now I'm going to take this piece, which I attach the Decaville to the back there. And I'm gonna line these corners up because that's the correct placement. And then now I have the lines for my thumb lock right there. Okay, so that should be about right. And then I'm also going to put this piece of Decaville Heavy behind it because I'm crazy and I just don't want things pulling out <laughs> of my materials. So here we go. I'm going to put this behind it as well. Rather be extra safe than sorry. And then I'll install this lock. It's just two prongs. Pretty easy, just like that. All right, and then I'm gonna put this extra piece of Decaville heavy behind it. And then my washer. All right, and then I'm gonna close that up and then I will cover that with tape because you don't want those prongs going through your material and rubbing up against things. All right, just like that. Awesome. All right, now I'm gonna put my nameplate right there. I'm just gonna eyeball it all here. I think I want it about right there. I don't want it too close to the edge. I think that looks about good. And we'll install my nameplate real quick. Awesome. Okay. Next up. Next I have my front pocket contrast band and my front pocket lining. I'm going to take those two pieces, make sure they're going the correct direction. This is the top. This is the bottom. I'm going to flip those, put those right sides together and sew that at my full seam allowance along this top part here. this up seam allowance going down towards this bottom lining pocket and we are going to top stitch along this piece so right down here stitching that seam down That's what I have so far. Now I want to take these two pieces to right here. I'm going to put them right sides together. I'm going to line this top up here. And 
Mm, just a minute, I want it to be centered and it's not quite centered right there. Okay. Perfect. And I'm going to stitch along this top edge with my full seam allowance. to push this seam allowance towards this band right up here. And we are going to top stitch along this black top piece here. Again, through that seam allowance, top stitch along the top. So this next part, we're going to fold these two pieces down together and you want to match these curved bottom edges. Okay. These should line up. That's what's important right now. And then that'll give you what the top piece should be creased at. All right. Just like that. And it gives you just a little trim on your pocket. So cool. All right, awesome. So I'm going to top stitch along the top edge of this and then I will baste this whole thing together. All right, so that's what the front looks like. That's what the back looks like. Let's do it. connected. Ooh, that's cute. Last step for this. We want to take this piece that we finished earlier and we want to lay this pocket on top here and we will baste the sides together and connect all of it to one piece. Putting quite a few clips so it just all stays in place. I don't want it to get slippery. All right, here we go. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. All right, let's baste that all together. There it is, our front panel. So adorable. Next step. We want to work on our flat panel. So I have my two flat panel pieces. 
I have the centers marked and taped down the middle. I'm going to fold my raw edges in on both of them. like that on both of them and then we'll attach the two pieces together and sew them down each side top stitch them down each side I should say make sure this fits my lock piece real quick hopefully it's not too wide hmm it's a little bit wider than the lock I have so I'm gonna need to do a bit smaller I should have checked that probably beforehand <laughs> um I'm going to have to do my flap just a little bit smaller it overhangs just a little bit this is made for a lock that's a little wider than an inch and mine is an inch wide. So I'll go just cut out two new pieces real quick and redo that and we'll go from there. Okay, so I changed mine to be an inch wide. It fits perfect. So make sure you check your thumb lock hardware before you attach this to anything and make sure that it's going to fit. That might be super important. Okay, my back panel top. And this piece right here needs to go together. So I'm just going to clip my center so I can get this nice and lined up. I'm doing it along this straight edge here and I'm centering this tab that I just did. It looks about right, right there. And I am going to baste that on. Hmm. Yeah, because it's going over like that. So, yes, this is correct. Here we go. Awesome. All right. And then I want to take my back pocket lining piece. Oh, my back panel bottom. That's different. Back panel bottom. All right. So that's the wrong one. This is the right one. My back panel bottom piece. All right. And now we're going to sew these two together. So line that up. And sew that at your full seam allowance. There we go.
We want to then flip this up. We want our seam allowance going down towards this bottom panel here, and we're going to top stitch along the bottom panel. Awesome. Before I go on any farther, I'm gonna go ahead and put my other Decaville light on this panel, and then we will work on our slip pocket that goes on the back. So I have that attached to this piece. Next, we wanna get the back pocket exterior, and this one right here. And the other lower band that we have, and we're gonna connect these two pieces together. So go along the bottom here. I'm gonna flip it up, line these edges together, and we're gonna sew along the bottom here at our seam allowance indicated in the pattern. And then we will flip it and top stitch. I want the seam allowance going down towards this bottom piece and we're gonna to top stitch along that piece. Awesome. Now we want to take the back pocket lining piece here with the top of this. We're going to line them right sides together up at the top here and we're going to sew along that edge. Full seam allowance and then we will top stitch. You want to fold that up. Your seam allowance is going to go up towards this lining piece here, and we're going to top stitch on that lining piece up at the top through our seam allowance. And then we are doing the same thing like we did with the front one. We're going to take it and line the bottom two edges up together. These curved edges, you want to line that up. And same thing that we did with the other side. We're going to top stitch this fold up here. And then we will baste these two pieces together or this piece in half, I guess you should say. So it is one folded piece. Okay, just like that. All right, here we go.
Okay, so now we wanna take this back panel piece here and this pocket we just finished and we are going to baste these two together. So line up the bottoms, get everything clipped together and then baste around to attach the two pieces together. Here we go. Awesome. There is our back panel piece. Our slip pocket. All done. Next step. This next step is optional. You don't have to put on piping, but I'll show you how I do mine. So mine's just vinyl folded in half and I've already attached it to one side. I'll show you how I did it. So you wanna measure down on each top edge an inch. All right, just do a little marking at that inch line. And that's your beginning and ending for your piping. All right, I'm not gonna clip mine all the way on first. I've gotten to the point where I can just attach it as I sew. So I wanna just clip this very top part here. So if you're doing this for the first time, clip it all the way around before you sew it on. All right. Okay, so when we get to these curves, I'm gonna be putting notches, just tiny little notches in my vinyl here and kind of stretching it through this curve like this. Do you see how I've got notches in it and I stretch it around that curve? And that's gonna help it when it's all done. It'll be nice and smooth along those corners when it's turned out. It is very important to do that or else you will have a bunch of bumps and wrinkles and not good looking stuff. Okay, so at that one inch mark, you're gonna kind of pull your piping off like that. And that's gonna be your beginning and ending and you're kind of tapering it on and off right there. All right, and then you just, I'm just doing an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're just tacking this on basically. You don't want to do any bigger than that because you don't want this to show when your bag is all done. All right, so now that I get down here, I'm just going to put tiny little notches around this curve. They are not big. They're like an eighth of an inch deep. All right, and then I'm just going to take my stiletto and kind of use that to hold it in place as I stretch and go around this corner. Now, again, you can just clip it into place first and then sew it on. That works really nicely if you're just beginning. Please do that. All right, let me go back down here. Back down to this corner, I'm gonna put some clips in it. All right, and then we'll go around this curve. So I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it with this hand, holding it in place with my stiletto and turning. So you got a couple things going on there. All 
And then you have to taper off again once it gets up here, right there. And that's it. Trim it even. And that is your piping. Again, you don't have to do it, but I'll tell you what, it sure gives a cute look to your bag. So if you want to try it, I highly suggest you do. All right, so there are my two panels. We're going to work on the gusset. I have my gusset pieces. I have already marked the placement for my connectors here. I have prong connectors. And so um, I used the top dot on this connector marking on the pattern. And that's gonna be the top of my washer. So they're even on both sides. I can kind of gauge it by that. So however you want to measure that, go for it. So we're gonna take it along the bottom edge here first, and we're gonna sew this together. And this is the one time where your seam allowance changes just slightly. So pay attention to that seam allowance as you go along. It doesn't change a lot, but every once in a while. So just pay attention to that. And then we're gonna press that seam open and top stitch along both sides. So I'm gonna press my seam open like that, okay? And then top stitch down each side. install my bridge connectors here. I do sell these cute little ones on my website. They're ones that I designed that I thought would be fun. Let's go check it out. Okay, so I'm putting that washer on that top dot there. And I know it's the top and bottom that I need for this. And then I'm also going to put some Decaville Heavy behind it. Let's give it some more support here. All right, install that. I've seen these installed both ways. I've seen them installed like this up and down or I've seen them installed this way as well. So I really think it's just whatever you like the look of, you can kind of go from there. They can go both ways. Okay. And then my washer. All right, we got that all on. I'm gonna press that in. And then I will put some tape over that. Okay. There's one. Cute. I'm going to go ahead and repeat for the other side. All right, there's our connectors all on. Let's attach it to our bag. Okay, so we're gonna take the front panel and you need to mark the center bottom. I don't have that marked. I'm gonna go ahead and just give it a little clip here. Okay, so you wanna take the gusset and we are now gonna attach it. So I've got my center seam there and my bottom clip. So I'm gonna do my center first down here, and then I'll go up to one side and clip, and up to the other side and clip, and then I will work it into my curves along the bottom corners. Okay. 
My material's kind of slick, my vinyl, so I am gonna use quite a few clips just so it all stays in place. Oops. I just like to throw my clips. Mine's a little bit, I've got a little bit of space along this, so I'm going to just move this up a tiny bit, and that's going to make up for that. I don't know if my vinyl stretched or if it's the pieces, but it's a little too big. So that's an easy fix if you can do that. Just make sure you do it evenly along both sides, though. Now I need to move this one up. Just a tiny bit. Let's see if that makes up for that gusset being a little too big. Yep, I think that's perfect. All right. I just want to put a couple little clips, not big, because you don't have a huge seam allowance. So just some little ones along this curve here. And that will just help everything lay nice and neat. Perfect. Okay. Much better there. And then let's get here. Okay. There it is. Let's go ahead and sew this side on.
All right, so this is all sewn on. I just wanna look, looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a second row of stitching right by my first row. I'm gonna start a little bit down just to help my stitches not pull when I turn the bag out. I like to do that on my exterior vinyl bags. It just, it helps with your stitches showing when you turn the bag out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run along and do that real quick and then we'll attach the back panel. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the back. Let's do it. All right, we're gonna turn this right side out. Let's see what we have. Okay, there is the exterior of our bag. That's pretty stinking cute. Oh, look at that. It's tiny. It's a little guy. It's skinny. It is just adorable, though. We'll have our little clip there. I think it turned out pretty good, guys. All right. Let's head to the lining. We're now gonna work on our lining. So I'm gonna put a little zipper pocket into our lining. It is optional and I am just doing it my way. I'm not doing it um, the written pattern way. I'm just going to, I drew my zipper box on my panel there, inch down, inch in on both sides and a half inch wide. I'm centering it about a little about a half inch down from the top and center and I'm going to sew around that right sides are together
Okay, now I'm gonna cut that center part out here, line down the middle, and then a V shape from the corner in. Just like that on both sides. And then I will turn the pocket through. I'm gonna take it over to my iron, give it a little bit of heat and press it. And then we'll put in our zipper. to the back like that. I'm gonna go situate it and press it and then we'll insert the zipper. Okay, I have that nice and pressed to the back. I've got my zipper here with double-sided tape, top and bottom. I'm gonna take that off and put it in there um, carefully and then we will sew around it. Make sure you get that centered there. My zipper pull is fun. I think I got this pull from Zipper Valley and it says limited edition. I thought it would be a fun, a fun pull for this bag. All right, beautiful. My zipper is going from left to right. I'm gonna sew around that box. All right, so after that, oof, I don't like that. Let me melt that real quick. Blend in a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to take the back and I'm just going to pull it up to the top here and we will close up the sides and the top of this panel. We're not leaving it open. We're pulling our bag through our lining. So we're not gonna leave the pocket open. All right, here we go. Okay, that closes off our zipper. I'm just gonna trim these sides down real quick. That one's okay. And make sure you melt, if you trimmed your zipper, make sure you melt that. Okay, there is my zipper pocket. We are going to move to the lining gusset and we're putting it together the same way as the exterior, okay? At the two bottom wider ends, we're going to take those and sew those across. And then we will flatten that seam allowance and top stitch down each side. Okay, I'm 
flattening that. So next we're going to attach our gusset to our main two lining panels. I'm just gonna clip my centers real quick. It'll make it go just a little bit easier. All right. And now we are just attaching this gusset just like we did with um, our exterior. So I'm going to match my bottom seam here first, and then I'll go to the top and fit it all the way around. All right, here we go. And we do want to leave, oh, actually I'm going to do my zipper pocket one first. We do want to leave a hole in the lining. So we need to remember that as we go along, I'll leave the hole in the other side of my bag. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. We're gonna start at the seam allowance in the pattern here, and then you are supposed to increase it a little bit as you go around, and then go back to your normal seam allowance up at the top. So pay attention to that particular part of the pattern. Make sure you're doing your seam allowances correctly. All right, here we go. All right, and then since I do have that bigger seam allowance, I wanna trim, I'm gonna to wanna to trim this down a little bit just so it doesn't have all this extra material in there. All right, and now we're going to take the other side of the lining and repeat those same steps except we're gonna leave a hole this time in the bottom.
All right, so my lining there, those pieces are attached. I have my hole to pull my bag through. Now you wanna take this lining contrast band. Usually you attach it before, but she's having you do this after the fact. So we're gonna sew these right sides together along both of these edges at our seam allowance. And then we do want to press that seam open and we're going to top stitch down each side. Okay, we're going to press it open and top stitch down each side. Awesome. So we have a circle now. We want to take our O lining and turn it right side out. And then we're going to take our contrast band. You want these, this curved part going down towards the bottom of the bag. So we're slipping the lining inside, just like this. Our right sides are together. Okay, this is down here. And we're gonna line that all up. Hmm, just a second. I want to, let me clip my center on the bottom here so I can center it with the lining and get it all lined up. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll work good. All right, let's do this again. Down this way. And then I can center this up first here. And then we want to sew this all the way around. That's how she's doing this. I don't think I clipped my center on this side. So we're just going to eyeball it here. And I'm guessing we want to flatten our seam on this um, inside part here. I'm gonna flatten my seam. Maybe I will. This lining bottom seam. I think it'll go better if they're all flattened. All right, so 
Sorry if that was out of view. All right, there is that. We're gonna go ahead and sew around this top edge. Okay, once that is sewn on, you're going to turn it up. And then we want our seam allowance going down towards the lining, towards this lining panel. And we are going to top stitch along the lining part, so the yellow material. Okay. Start maybe on the side. You know what? I think I'm going to turn it the other way to top stitch. It might be easier. And then I can just slide it in like this. And I'm not fighting with it as much. There we go. All right, let's do some top stitching. So my seam allowance is going down towards the lining. And I'm top stitching on the yellow lining piece. Okay, so our top piece is all put on. Our lining looks beautiful. All right, let's put the two pieces together. Okay, so I'm gonna take my lining here, leave it inside out. I'm gonna take my exterior and put it into my lining. You're gonna have to do some shoving. It's gonna be a tight fit. And make 
sure that your tab is kind of turned down out of your way. Okay, so start matching up all of your centers. So I have my top centers clipped. It's just gonna take a minute to get it adjusted in there. Okay, here we go. So, I'll line up those top centers here. And just start getting it all even and clipped together all the way around. And then again, I'll flatten this seam, just like we did connecting the lining to that top contrasting band. Okay, I put quite a few clips on there because I don't want it to shift. As I'm sewing it, they tend to pop off, but there we go. Okay, I'm going to sew around that and then we'll pull it through. All right, so mine did slip a tiny right here. I don't think it's enough that I need to worry about it. It looks okay on this side. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. Um, the rest of it looks good. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let's turn this out and see what we have. You know what, I think I'm also just going to do, ah, do a few clips along my curves. Just so that when I turn it, it just looks nice and it lays nicely. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of pinking shears around the curve. I'm not cutting much off in way of seam allowance, but just getting that curve in there. Here we go.
right, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get, well, it's kind of popping out okay. I'm like, we're gonna have to get in there and push out this seam, but it seems to be coming out. Cause you got that slight little curve right up at the top. This one's good, I think. And this one, okay. So cute. Look at our bag. Ah, okay. So the last two things we need to do is top stitch around the top of this bag, which I'm gonna do from the inside and go around just because it's such a small little bag. It's gonna be super hard for me to lay it down and do it that way. Um, so we'll top stitch it that way and then we'll close up the hole in the bottom lining and we are done. Oh, huh. and we need to attach our thumb lock. We'll do that too. All right. Hey, ooh, baby, all top stitched. All right, so let's just pull our lining out and we're going to close that up. And then we'll install our thumb lock.
So I have my thumb lock, it's super easy. It's just two screws, all right? So you want your thumb lock to go this way, right there. You don't want any threads or anything coming out of it though. So let's just seal all that up. All right. Super, super easy. First screw. on there tight and voila all done we just had to put our strap on the side connectors and we are good to go that is adorable okay we're all done and this bag is just adorable i am in love i'm in love look at that those connectors, ah, they're so cute. I sell these little cute things on my website. I love it. It's perfect for a small bag like this. I mean, how adorable is that bag? All right, guys, thank you all for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It would mean so much. It would help me out. I would really appreciate it. Please check out the description for all the links for all the materials used in this video. Let me know if you guys have any comments or questions. Thank you so much for your support and we'll see you guys next time.